Welcome to the realm of intoxicating flavors and head-banging beer reviews. Welcome to another episode of the Rare Beer Club. I'm your host, the Ginger Yeti. And if you're new to the channel, the Rare Beer Club is a subscription club put out by the BeerMonthClub.com. And as a part of this club, I receive a box of beer every month. And it contains two hand-selected bottles of beer for about $60. Uh, it's awesome I get this as a gift every year. And then I unbox these beers and select one to review blindly right now. And I'll review the second one at a later time. So let's get into the box here. Uh, this box I received after I left for tour. September 23rd is the date on the shipping label. And I have no idea what beers are in here now. You do get an email every month, and it will tell you about the beers. And you can change the beer if you don't want to have that kind of beer, that style, whatever. But I never look at those emails. I just open these up blindly. They come with these paperwork. And it's always nicely packaged. Two big crazy beers. St. Fraulein Quadruple from... I don't know where that's from. Is it from St. Fraulein? I don't know. We'll look at the paperwork in a second here. And the other beer, that's a cool label. Duke of Dabblers from Sudwork Brewing out of Davis, California. Let's move this box out of the way. See if I can knock things over. So these are the two beers I received in this box of beers. Take a look at the paperwork real quick. So the St. Fraulein... Is Brasserie St. Fraulein from the Le, Le, I don't know, Wallonia, Belgium. I don't know how to say that. It's quadruple, 11% alcohol, always a night ender. And then this one over here, the Sudwork Brewing from Davis, California, Duke of Dabblers, a rare beer club exclusive. And it's a triple. So I have to choose between a quad and a triple. Hmm, that's a tough choice. And you know, I swear. Every time these uh, Rare Beer Club, the paperwork always suggests glassware, and it's always tulip goblet or chalice. Chalice goblet, tulip, or snifter glass. Uh, since the last time I did one of these, if you saw that video, I chose a triple. I, I reviewed a triple. I was not impressed with it whatsoever. So I'm going to go into this triple and do this triple, and I'll put this uh, quad away for next time. See if I can get it back in the box there correctly. Put that paperwork aside. So what do we have here? We have this Sudwork Brewing, Davis, California, Duke of Dabblers. Artwork by Paint in My Blood. Interesting name, Paint in My Blood. Belgian triple style ale. Brewed and bottled by Sudwork Brewing, California, Davis, California. California Craft Lager since 1989. It's really cool uh, artwork here on the bottle. It is really some cool artwork there. And like I said, this comes with paperwork. I generally read some about it. Uh, Sudwork Brewing in Davis, California was established in 1989 by two German descendants with the mission to deliver the authentic taste of high-quality German lagers. For over 35 years, they've been pushing the limits of traditional lager brewing, helping to shape the craft beer industry along the way. Their brewing approach marries traditional German techniques with contemporary West Coast craft practices, embracing the meticulous and challenging nature of lager brewing. They find it to be an invigorating endeavor. Their beers feature clean, crisp yeast profiles, bold hop flavors, and robust malt characteristics, all within a lager framework. Is this a lager? I wouldn't have ever considered a triple a lager, but maybe it is. Uh, this isn't the ordinary lager you might expect. That's how we came to be familiar with and fans of what they were up to in Davis. The Master Brewers Program at the University of California, Davis, is basically right next to Sudwork. And the brewery maintains an interesting symbiotic relationship with the university. UC Davis Program, one of the premier brewing schools in the country, of which there are like a very small handful, actually holds classes just above Sudwork's tasting room. And those attending the UC Davis program serve as mentors on the brewery's pilot system. 
Best way to keep an operation focused, have a ton of visiting brewers watching over them. So this says here that Sudderburg Duke of Dabbler's Triple Ale pours a golden amber hue topped with a dense, long-lasting white foam. So we'll see if that's the case here. Uh, before I pop it open, like I said, it's 9% alcohol, serving temperature 42 to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's probably about where it is because I can tell temperature perfectly fine just touching the bottle with my hand. And we'll see what it's like here. And I think I'm going to kind of go through this paperwork a little bit as I'm rating the beer. Do it a little different. The crown is just a nondescript gold crown. It had a nice hiss to it. And then nothing else. Man, that's a big boy bottle right there. Glug, glug. So this does tell me characteristics I should look for in the nose. Let's see what I get here. The initial aroma reveals stone fruit, golden delicious apple, clove, white pepper, and honey buttered toast. White pepper for sure. Maybe a little bit of stone fruit. The gentle swirl, notes of caramel, floral, and piney hops, and mandarin orange citrus emerge along with subtle hints of cotton candy. Yeah, I'm not getting much of any of that. I mean, I get the white pepper for sure. Maybe a little bit of the clove. Kind of pick up some hops, like the floral side of hops. I don't know where they're getting cotton candy from. But yeah, that white pepper's kind of strong. The bouquet is rich and pronounced, ready for our, ready in our olfactory senses for the complex flavors to follow. Before I dip in there, that color, that's like a golden color there. It does have that kind of white, soda like head that's sticking around. I mean, I don't know if it's dense, but it is kind of sticking around a lot. They don't give you the SRM color on these things, which I don't know why. But that's getting down into probably... The color I can't see on my chart, a 6. So I'm going to give it a 6 on the SRMs. And of course, when I go to edit the video, I'll drop down the uh, untap rating and beer advocate ratings if they're available. I'll put that down there in the, on the video. So the taste of Sudbury Duke Dabbler's Triple Ale is characterized by ripe stone fruits like nectarine and apricot with gooseberry and mandarin. Although not as bad as that last triple I did, that Three Fates, I think it was, from Barrel of Monks. There is a bit of carbonation in this one, too. It's not overpowering. It's not ruining the beer like that other one did. Do get the stone fruit. I don't know about gooseberry. Do get some stone fruit. As you sip, gentle spice notes of clove and white pepper come forward. Definitely get that white pepper. Bready malt flavor with hints of caramel and honey. Don't know about the caramel. Yeah, you kind of get some of that breadiness. Maybe a little bit of honey. The Belgian yeast adds layers of spiced yellow apples, hints of cotton candy, and bubble gum with white grape. I don't get any of that. None at all. Malt flavor is prominent throughout, delivering a Subtle sweetness balanced by the yeast white pepper and delicate clove undertones with just a touch of fennel. Now, I love fennel, and there is no fennel in this. I would pick that out immediately because I like fennel a lot. However, it is a subtle sweetness with, with some nice white pepper from the yeast and, and some clove undertones. You do get those stone fruits, like they said. So that's pretty on point there. Robust malt character is well-balanced by the yeast, resulting in an unexpectedly dry aromatic profile. It's definitely drying. Drying for sure. Hot bitterness, not really there. Sudwork Duke Dabbler's Triple Ale features a medium plus to full bodied mouthfeel with a creamy yet effervescent mousse of tightly packed bubbles. Medium for sure. I do get that 
kind of effervescence, but again, it's not that crazy off-putting over-carbonation like the last triple I tried. You know, overall, this is a really nice beer. It's a good triple. I mean, I, I can see why the Rare Beer Club pulled this bottle to be, uh, or pulled this beer to be part of their exclusive line. Uh, if you can get the Rare Beer Club, I highly recommend it. It's a really cool uh, subscription every month. 60 bucks for two bottles like these. You get a lot of cool things. Now, if this beer is something you're interested in, you can go on their website and just order it without having to be part of the Rare Beer Club. I think it's still, I mean, the paperwork says here it's going to be $20.50 per bottle, plus shipping and handling, whatever shipping and handling it is. And you get discounts on four bottles, six bottles, 12 bottles. But this is a nice beer. I'd give this beer big horns up. 9% alcohol, don't notice it at all. This is a really good beer. After that last triple I tried, I'm really good to this one. Like, holds up, stands up is a really nice beer. This is an excellent beer. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Rare Beer Club. As always, embrace the adventure.